<laughs> so let's start with uh, Summer Game Fest. Uh, this is Jeff Keighley's little project that he was working on last year. So last year when E3 was canceled, Jeff Keighley jumped in and he started his Summer Game Fest in order to, you know, salvage what would have been uh, an E3. Uh, it was kind of spanned across the whole summer and it was okay. But he's coming back this year again, and it's a little bit more refined. So this is coming from uh, Christopher Dring at GameIndustry.biz. Uh, so he writes, now he, Jeff Keighley, is back to do the same thing this June. This time, Keighley is putting on a show called Kickoff Live on Thursday, June 10th. The show will feature a string of game announcements and a few live performances, including from Weezer. That is designed to kick off a series of publisher events, including some that will take place at E3. The idea is that we will have a big kickoff show this year, Keeley tells GameIndustry.biz. Everything last year was so spread apart by nature of the pandemic, and the feel from everyone is that they want these game shows all together. So now we're going to just do a big full-on show for Summer Games Fest that leads into a big publisher events, which is hopefully more than what uh, is, which is more of what people wanted, where things are more condensed and combined together. So people have a date and a time to show up for news. That's what we're going for. And then to add to that, IGN is also returning with their IGN Expo. Uh, so they wrote uh, on IGN, of course, IGN Expo 2021 will bring together new game reveals, never before seen gameplay and announcements you won't hear from anyone else. We'll also be partnering with Jeff Keighley's Kickoff Live, bringing you more information about the biggest announcements from June 10th World Premiere Showcase, which you can, of course, watch with us here on IGN. Last year's uh, Summer of Gaming was brought to, it was. Uh, brought you five separate IGN Expo events. The being exclu exclusive announcements uh, reveals like Yakuza Like a Dragon, Borderlands 3, Chivalry 2, and much, much more. With summer events coming back with a vengeance in 2021, we know you're already going to have a loaded schedule, so we're condensing uh, all of our Expo goodness into a single action-packed show with absolutely no downtime. So, Adam, right off the bat, not going into the necessity of these shows or anything like that, what are, what's your just excitement level for these kind of shows? Uh, it's probably more interesting this year than it is the previous year, because now we have a bit more of a preparedness from at least the part on developers, or at least I would hope so, so that this year we're going to get a little bit more announcements of games that might actually exist in the next 12 months instead of what actually happened, which is a lot of things got announced and then got pushed back because everybody realized, oh shit, pandemic's really hard to make games in. Yeah. And at least it seems like, you know, we're going to have a much more condensed schedule. It doesn't sound like it could be all in one day because, I mean, E3 is what it is for, I think it's like five days. But that doesn't mean that every publisher is going to do something within that spectrum. It could be a month worth of stuff. It could be months worth of stuff. It could be two weeks worth of stuff. We don't know yet because, I mean, we don't have official dates for a lot of these uh, video packages or announced streams or anything of like that that's going on. But like I said, the excitement's definitely going to be higher only because we might actually see stuff that might be in our hands sooner than usual. And it might not just be a cascade of indie games, which don't get me wrong, I'm not taking a shot at indie games. It's just we might actually see some big names show up and they won't be something that's for like two, three years down the line, which I think people are not really in the best of moods for when they've just spent 16, nearly 18 months now literally having nothing to look forward to so yeah i think you're right i think this is definitely um in the right direction of where these shows should be going in the sense of you know last year these events were just way too spread out and no offense to jeff Keeley, i just felt like his event didn't really bring anything to the table i felt it was more he he created this event tried to get people to fall under the umbrella and then if people were doing their own thing, which a lot of the big publishers were doing, he was just kind of slapping his sticker on it and just being like presented by game fest. And people were like, no, like they were doing this regardless of you. Uh, so I don't know if it's there. So I think having it more of a condensed showcase is what people want, as opposed to a, you know, marathon of a summer of just game announcements. It was just, it was too much to track. And then you also have to fill it with content. So you have situations where like, do you remember, like, especially Microsoft, I believe, but I think Sony did this too, where it was like, hey, here's a preview. Now stay tuned for like our next show where we'll actually show you the game. And it was kind of like really annoying. I know they did that with uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, I think it was like Ubisoft was like, hey, like we're going to have a preview. And it was just like a short cinematic trailer. And they're like, come back at the Xbox showcase. For, yeah, I like, think it was just like the same trailer they already had or something. 
yeah so it was like a lack of content spread too thin and like that's not what people wanted so i think having these as more condensed one time you know events i think is going to be more beneficial for them i guess my question though to you is with e3 being back do we need these events that all depends on what those events are i think well, there's let, room for as these... many as we want it's just a matter of is it going to be something that's like a one time thing is it maybe a week after E3, a week before E3, like, is it a pre-game? Is it a post-game? Like, what is it? Because it can all mesh together really well, but if it ends up just being this another diatribe of two to three months worth of all these little video streams that reveal, let's be honest, like, as much as I enjoyed Summer Games Fest, a lot of what it was was a bunch of games that you've never heard of that you weren't going to play being shown off. Like I said, I'm yeah. not taking shot at indie games, but for most, the average gamer... You're not looking at all these indie trailers and going, oh my God, like that's what I'm going to stand in line for because you don't stand in line for that. You see that on the Steam sale in the summer. That's that's how you know those games. And yeah, most of I them don't go anywhere. So you just end up spending a lot of those video packages being like, that looks cool, but I'm not going to buy it. That looks cool, I'm not going to buy it. That looks like garbage. That looks cool, but I don't think I could ever justify buying. Like it's just a lot of like, that's cool, but which doesn't help. Yeah, and this, once again, this is not a, a slight against indie games, or, but they typically, and I mean, there are there are cases where like it breaks the mold, but generally, indie games is not something that you get super hyped for that generates a lot of excitement, like you would for like you know a huge third, you know, triple A first party publisher kind of game. Yeah, no, you're not going to watch every like indie package and think you you're getting the next Valheim right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're you're, you're looking like more forward much more to all the AAA content. You're looking forward to what, like, Xbox and PlayStation, Nintendo, and Capcom, and Activision, like, what they're all doing. You don't... Mm -hmm. Like, it's not... Again, it's not like we don't care about any developers. It's just they're not as prevalent in our minds. So, like, whenever they we see stuff from them, we're like, oh, that's cool, but that's about as far as it gets, you know? Yeah. See, I'm of the mindset I don't... I like the fact that Jeff Keighley is doing this kind of stuff. I like the fact that, you know... He is part of this industry and I think is doing an awesome job in terms of, you know, building events. But I don't know if we need an, a summer games fest on top of an E3. Hell, I don't even know at this point if we need an E3. And, and my logic is, is that a lot of companies now are doing these things digitally and they can do it remotely. And so they don't need to have a... a, a like a press conference uh, like that costs tens of thousands of dollars at some conference center. Um, that being said, I think that you need to still have those big conferences. Like I think having those huge shows are, are beneficial, but for me, uh, there's nothing added to it in that I can't, there's nothing there. It's just filler in between trailers and you can just show me trailers. And I feel like, um, you know, state of plays or, um, Nintendo directs like that's that's something that just works just as well. What I think it needs to do is I think it needs to become more something like Gamescom or instead of publishers spending this money to do a somewhat closed off E3 where, you know, it's not really accessible to people. You can't get into the conferences. I think you need to do more like what PlayStation used to do with um, PlayStation experience where you could kind of go in and actually get your hands on these games and get interactive. And so what I'd like to see is and what I think would make this really helpful or, or at least more value added is that, hey, guys, we're going to be doing this game, summer games fest. We're going to be sh demoing games. But the cool thing is, is that we've talked to all these developers and anything that you see here is going to have a playable demo. So we're going to have a little link. We're going to have a website. We've talked to Microsoft, talked to PlayStation. Um, you know, they're going to have like a little summer games fest thing and all the demos are going to be there for one week. Um, you can stream them. You can play them. And then they're gone. And that would kind of get people way more hyped. But right now, it's a very passive experience. And we kind of already have that with E3. And I feel like by having E3, by having Summer Game Fest, by having IGN Expo, like they're all segmenting a little bit in the sense that some people are going to do reveals at IGN. Some are going to do reveals at E3. Some are going to do them at Summer Game Fest. And so you're taking the news or you've got the releases or the new, like the game announcements that we'd normally get and you're just stretching them out further again and i just don't know if that that doesn't do anything this would be the honest solution when e3 is back to being a physical event 
Jeff, if he wants to keep doing these things, needs to change the season. It should be like a winter game fest. Mm-hmm. Change it to a time where it doesn't interfere so you can have like your own little bit. It's away from E3, so it doesn't feel like it's a slog fest of all these video packages and streams you got to keep up with. You segment it out. Now, IGM will always have an E3 presence. They'll just do what they normally do, which is have their interviews and their little extra coverage thing that they do. But if Jeff wants to do the kind of thing that he's doing with, with Summer Game Fest, it's it can't work around the same time at E3 if we have a normal festival. If he wants to do his interviews and stuff like that, that's totally fine. No problem. But I don't want to see another two, three, four streams of all these game trailers and, sh- and shit when... I already have three, four, five days of this already happening at E3, so. Yeah. If, if yeah, it was I, moved, I could see it making sense because at least then, not even, it doesn't even have to be reveals. It can just be updates on games that are, that are going to be coming out in 12 months as of E3, and now it's six months yeah. in, and they can be like, hey, here's some gameplay footage, or here's some more. Like, okay, by the way, this game is going to go into open beta soon, so you guys can test this out, or your demo is going to be sh- launching in three we- or three months. There's all like these different ways kinda- around it. I feel like that's what he's kind of done, though, with his uh, game awards. So, yeah, that's true. I th- yeah, I, I honestly. Yeah, it, they, that probably would be. Hmm, that makes it even weirder because you yeah. can't take the trailers and stuff away from the game awards because then otherwise no one cares. Like, let's let's be real. Like when it comes to the game awards, if you stop putting in trailers, I, like you lose half the audience guaranteed minimum. Yeah. It might even be more than that. It might be 75%. I, I, I would say so. So I think for me, for something like Summer Games Fest or something to make sense, I think it needs to become more interactive and more direct for, for the players, right? So you need to start working with these companies and saying like, hey, you guys are going to be showing these games. You know, let me sort of make it so that they can play them and get their hands on Get they could also that. go a lot more out of the range instead of it just being trailers and reveals. They could be like, hey, here's like the special gaming event. Like we got just because it's always the name. We got Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's mm-hmm. going to come in and we're going to have him play this game that's, you know, just got revealed. Here he is playing a demo of it for the first time. Mm-hmm. You get to see him do it and he'll answer questions while he's playing. Like you can yeah. do cool stuff like that. But yeah, like I think we were saying earlier with like, E3 is already going to be a, a cavalcade of trailers and reveals and demos and all this stuff. We don't need that on top of that, on top of that with IGN probably wanting to do their own thing. And you got all these other companies that want to do their own little things like do something to pull away and be a little bit different. I think that might be able to be a better way around it than just being the, the trailer like stream again. Right. You, you definitely nailed it. You have to pull away from that and do something different. Cause like Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo are not going to give you their big announcements to drop at the Games Fest. They're going to save that for their conferences. Unless Game Fest is just a Trojan horse for Sony to just come in with E3 and no one's expecting it. I, I, I don't think they're pulling the cheap pop by, by just keeping Sony behind the, uh, the pane of glass, just being like, hey, <laughs> you know... Here we go. It's time for, you know, the last reveal here. And Microsoft steps off the stage. All of a sudden you hear the glass crack. And then friggin' like Stone Cold Steve Austin friggin' what's his, what's his face from Sony just strolls right in and be like, now wait just a damn minute. Is that shooting? Uh, I, don't, Sony, I don't think that's going to happen. 